Do you know the energy field that is created by every living object in the Star Wars universe? You know, the field that surrounds and penetrates everything as well as binds the galaxy together? Well, what if that didn't exist? Today, I'm tackling the question, can you beat LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga without using the Force? We start with the first level, The Phantom Menace Chapter 1, Negotiations. We start off with an unavoidable force use to escape the gas chambers. There is also a second force use to build this protocol droid panel for the inferior C-3PO. Here, we are at a third one on this gate, and then we go to this next section. Once we are at the blue laser door, defeat the droids, get on this blue magnetic device, and jump just right to get over the wall without using the force for those steps. Do the same for player 2, press the buttons, and open up the MTT. On to chapter 2, Invasion of Naboo. To skip blowing up this MTT, turn the refresh rate to 50 Hz and backflip Quigan Jin up the tree. He'll glitch up there and, as Obi-Wan, lift up the tree with the force to glitch Qui-Gon underneath the ground. This will skip the MTT. The rest of this level is just normal gameplay. Use the force to make this platform, use the force on this red lever, and also on this platform. Use the force on this object, collapsing the ramp, walk through the murky water, this door, and to the Gungan waters. On to chapter 3, Escape from Naboo. This level is actually very nice in terms of force ability. Since we play as Queen Amidala and Captain Panaka, we don't need the force. Even when we meet up with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan Kenobi, we can just continue to use the Queen to finish this level. On to chapter 4, Mos Espa Pod Race. It's a pod race. The force isn't required, I guess unless you count Little Annie's amazing reflexes. Chapter 5, Retake Theed Palace. Defeat all of the droids, use the force to build this ramp, and use this astromech droid panel with R2. If you fly across this gap with R2, somehow, Padme and Panaka follow you, but we can use this to our advantage. Position a couple of droids on some buttons, and, with luck on our side, we can get the characters on the rest of the buttons and open the door without the weirdos waving their hands all over the place. Go through the rest of this level and build the bridge with the force. Lift this box up to get Qui-Gon up to the button. In this section, we can glitch Panaka into the wall, through the floor, inside the wall, and into the next section without using the force once. In the last area, position one of the shooters correctly to shoot the Oom um security battle droids to save the pilots. Use this panel and we're done. Chapter 6, Darth Maul. To skip the first phase of the fight, jump Qui-Gon over to this wall to glitch him up to this light. Jump across the gap and chase Darth Maul into the next area. To not use the force on these platforms, we can jump into this wall, up even further, and onto this platform. Jump down to this floor and continue running after Darth Maul. Play through this section completely normally, defeat the droids, push the buttons, and onto the next bit. Use the force four times to get past these laser fields, and fight Darth Maul. He'll jump up to this platform, so just use the force twice when he does that. Pop him in half, and that finishes the Phantom Menace, Unlike how Jar Jar did nothing to stop the B-1 battle droids. There are a total of 17 force uses in the first episode. 3 in chapter 1, 5 in chapter 2, 0 in chapter 3 and 4, 3 in chapter 5, and 6 in chapter 6. On to Attack of the Clones chapter 1, Bounty Hunter Pursuit. Play through this level completely normally. Ace Zam Wessel and Feeder. Chapter 2. Discovery on Kamino. Instead of fixing these antennas, fly across using R4. Play through the level as normal, and use a force press to reveal the clones for the first time. Meet Jango Fett, follow him, dodge these bombs, use a force press to reveal this panel, and go inside. Use a force press to reveal this panel and fight Jango. Fight him as normal, except instead of deflecting the rockets with the force, just deflect bullets back at Jango from his Slave 1 ship. This level is now done. Chapter 3, 
Droid Factory. We go to Planet Genesis, where we fight hordes of Geonosians and run along the assembly line. We get to our first force use on this fan. Play through like normal, getting R2 across to this panel, and there are six unavoidable force uses to spin these around to get C3PO across to this panel. Run around the Geonosian Hive and shoot down this platform. Use the force to lift it up to get R2 across to activate the bridge. Activate this conveyor belt and use the force to put this bomb over here so we can commit an act of terrorism. Using four force uses, we free Obi-Wan from the grasp of Jango Fett and Darth Tyrannus. Chapter 4, Jedi Battle. This one is pretty straightforward. Defeat the droids and use the force to save the selected person. Do this three times for Padme, Anakin, and Obi-Wan. Play the rest of the level like normal, going through waves of droids until Jedi Grandmaster Yodi arrives in his Republic gunship. Chapter 5, Gunship Cavalry. Just like the other vehicle levels, no force uses are required. Get to the droid command center and blow it up. Chapter 6, Count Dooku. This level is played 100% normally, despite the force uses. Get up here, pull these levers, fight Count Dooku, and force push these barrels back at him three times. Finish him off with Yoda and Obi-Wan, and that wraps up Attack of the Clones in a pretty little gift box full of war and agony, and a total of 23 force uses. Zero in Chapter 1, three in Chapter 2, 13 in Chapter 3, three in Chapter 4, zero in Chapter 5, and four in Chapter 6. Revenge of the Sith Chapter 1, Battle over Coruscant. This level is played normally and does not require any force ability. Dodge and weave through vulture droids and fly into this separatist ship. Chapter 2, Chancellor in Peril. Use the force to open this door and climb up this pipe. Use the force to open the yellow gate, obtain R2 and force lift this bomb. Bomb this ship, jump onto this light bulb and force this lever down, activating the fan. Get R2 up here and save the Emperor, I mean Chancellor in Peril by executing the count. Run through this hall, get around the gas with R2 as well as this beam, which R2 can fly around. Activate this panel, get to the driver's seat, and bring the ship down. Chapter 3, General Grievous. We actually don't need the force at all in this level. If you know, the force is required to move this and this just among a few things. Instead, Commander Cody and Obi-Wan can stand over here while Cody shoots at Grievous. When he stops taking damage, jump Obi-Wan back to the main platform to get Grievous back on screen. Keep doing this until he's at one heart where Obi-Wan can finish him off from there. Chapter 4, Defense of Kashyyyk. There are two force uses right at the start to activate this bridge. There's two to activate the batteries and two more to activate them for this second bridge. There's another force use to activate this grapple point to save this Wookiee. Instead of using the force on this planet to get up here, Use an AT-AP to jump Yoda up here and jump above the drawbridge to the next section. Ironically, I always used to play this level like this because I just couldn't figure out the grapple point from the plant. Moving on. Use the AT-AP to get Yoda and Chewbacca up here, and use the force to build a staircase for Chewie to press these buttons. Use the force four times to activate these lights, destroy them, and use the force to lift the escape pod the rest of the way out of the ground. This level is now finished. Chapter 5, Ruin of the Jedi. This level isn't too bad. Use the force to get into the temple and make a perfect double jump with Yoda up here to skip building this staircase. Use the force to reveal these gears and to turn them, totaling our force used to four in this section. To skip this area with the buttons and inevitable force uses, use a drop and warp with Obi-Wan to glitch Yoda through this door. Use the force on this film reel to reveal Anakin's misdeeds. Oh, and uh, to end this level, or whatever, I guess. Chapter 6, Darth Vader. Ah yes, the fall of little Annie. This level is played practically normally. Run through this corridor, use the force to move only these beams out of the way, and to open this door requiring 5 force uses. Destroy these, get over here, and use the force to block the wall of fire. Use the force to build this wheel thing, and to spin it as well. The rest of the level doesn't require anything. Escape the rising lava, and fail at killing the galaxy's biggest terrorist. Oh. 
This ends Revenge of the Sith with the galaxy in shambles, all because I refused to utilize a magic ability made up purely for the science fiction genre. There are a total of 33 force uses in Revenge of the Sith. Zero in chapter one, six in chapter two, zero in chapter three, 13 in chapter four, six in chapter five, and eight in chapter six. That ends the prequel trilogy with a total of 73 force uses. 17 Force uses in The Phantom Menace, 23 in Attack of the Clones, and 33 in Revenge of the Sith. Do you think we can do better in the originals? A New Hope Chapter 1, Secret Plans. This level primarily focuses on Princess Leia and Captain Antilles, so no Force uses are required here. Chapter 2, Through the Junlin Wastes. This first part of the level is normal until we get to this dune, which will require one force use on this ramp. Skipping ahead to this Jawa sand crawler, we can use a Bantha to get underneath this sucker to double jump and Jedi slam into the ground to be transported to the inside. This part requires five force uses, one for each valve. Get R2 and go up this elevator. Get 3-3PO and using Luke's blaster, destroy the sand crawler door hinges. Do this part with 3PO as normal and instead of using the force to build a bridge, jump against the wall and jump again to get to the other side. You may be wondering how we can do this part without 3PO. Well, jump along the wall with Obi and we'll get past this quicksand. Get over to Ben's hut as normal and go inside. Chapter 3, Most Isley Spaceport. Skip using the force on these stairs, glitch Obi-Wan through the door with Luke's X-34 land speeder. Building this ATSC requires 8 force uses to get past this gate and into the cantina. Find Han Solo amongst the cantina's patrons, and the rest of the level can be done with Han. Get back to the ship and defeat Garandan. Chapter 4, Rescue the Princess. We start out with the whole crew. Using Old Ben, use a force press to open this door, and disguise either Han or Luke as a stormtrooper to open this door and activate this panel with R2. After the cutscene, Juan leaves the rest of the company and the rest of the level is played without any force uses. Get to the cell block and save the princess. Chapter 5, Death Star Escape. This whole level doesn't require any force uses. Get out of the trash compactor, make your way through the Death Star's winding corridors, get back to the aluminum vulture, and watch as Kennedy is struck down and becomes more powerful than Darth could possibly imagine. Chapter 6, Rebel Attack. It's another vehicle level. Hey, it has a trench run, which is one of my favorite moments in the whole saga. That ends A New Hope with a total of 15 force uses. 0 in Chapter 1, 6 in Chapter 2, 8 in Chapter 3, 1 in Chapter 4, and 0 in Chapters 5 and 6. Onto the Empire Strikes Back with Chapter 1, Hoth Battle. Two vehicle levels in a row. Haven't had that happen yet. Defeat Aats and protect Echo Base from the evil Emperor Zerg. Chapter 2, Escape from Echo Base. No force uses are required in this level either, considering the primary characters we play as are Han and Leia. Chapter 3, Falcon Flight. As the name suggests, it's another vehicle level. Fly through the asteroid field and avoid the Star Destroyers. Until Tamor Morrison finds you. Chapter 4, Dagobah. Finally, some action. Trek Luke and R2 through the swamp to Yoda's hut. This is when Luke starts learning the Force. We can neglect his training, however, by taking R2 through the swampy water, over to the mushrooms, and performing what is called the Mushroom Skip. Fly onto this wall, onto this mushroom, onto this wall to gain enough leverage, and onto the second mushroom. Fly over to the panel and into the next section. Luke has now learned the Force exactly like Ray Palpatine, and, instead of Force building this tractor, jump Yoda across the swamp carefully, to get to the next platform to destroy the object blocking our way into the dark side cave. Get the gang over to this obviously fake Darth Vader and beat him up. Use a force press to get up here. Use another to trigger this third force press to work. Get Yoda up here by levitating this container and finish off Darth Vader. This part destroys the count. Seven entire force uses are required to kill these plants and build this turnstile for this bridge. Another force use is required to get Luke or Yoda up here to push this crate to the ground. Build this panel for R2 and one more force press to access the X-Wing. 
Chapter 5, Cloud City Trap Start off by using Luke's newfound force abilities to build a half a bridge out of his X-Wing wing. Build the rest with R2's panel. Use the force to assemble this gun and blow open this door. In the first Darth Vader fight, play as normal. Suffocate him and follow him to the outside of Cloud City. We can just barely jump across this gap to get R2 across. Use the force to get up here, use this panel, and follow Darth Vader. Now, there are ways to skip the second Darth Vader fight known as DV2 skip, but the method I tried was incredibly hard, and other methods required the force anyway. Darth Vader 2 fight requires two force presses in this room to defeat him as normal. Again, if we skip this room, that will save two force uses there. Follow Vader into his third fight, but just jump across the gap to skip it. Jump across this gap, hurt Vader, get on this panel, and jump up here. Defeat Vader as normal. This level, the way I showed, is 5 force uses, but skipping Darth Vader 2 saves 2 force uses. Chapter 6, Betrayal over Bespin. There are no force uses in this level because we use normal, non-force sensitive dweebs. That ends, arguably, the best movie in the whole saga, with a total of 14 force uses. 0 in chapters 1, 2, and 3, 11 in chapter 4, a minimum of 3 for chapter 5, and 0 in chapter 6. On to the final episode, Return of the Jedi Chapter 1, Jabba's Palace. This level is played normally until we meet Luke Skywalker, Jedi. Use one force use to get Chewie up here and open the gate. Another one is required to build this gonk platform. Rescue the droids and progress. In this section, we can do what is known as Chewbacca skip. Get Luke and Chewie up here, position Chewie accordingly, and use the force on this platform to glitch Chewie through the wall. Walk under the ground and jump into the next section. Play the rest of the level as normal and save Han. Defeat the Rancor and this level is done. Chapter 2, The Great Pit of Carcoon. We can only use Luke for this first section, fortunately. Jump across the barges and defeat Boba. Get to Jabba's main barge with a force press, we can activate all three platforms. The first two are easy, but the third one requires a perfect double jump. Use the force to lift both panels and match this color. Use the turnstile to match this third color and enter the barge. Build this gun to open this fence and double jump and Jedi slam into the ground to progress upwards. We can skip the disco room by putting Chewie in the corner and glitching Luke through the wall after building this stereo. Glitch Luke up into the next section. Progress through here normally. Open up these targets, jump up here, go over to this corner, jump into the wall, and jump up into the turret. That will spawn R2 up here to help finish the level. Chapter 3, Speeder Showdown. We can jump on the flower and over the log to use a force press on this platform. To skip the speeder showdown and the force uses to blow up the gate's power system, go into this corner with the speeder, Flip and glitch Luke over the gate. Get up to the AT-80 -AT normally and take out the Empire's satellite dishes. Chapter 4, The Battle of Endor. Just like all of the other levels, this level doesn't have anyone who can use the Force, so no Force uses. We'll battle our way through the forests of Endor, get to the Empirical base, and blow it up from the inside. Chapter 5, Jedi Destiny. This level is very unique because it is the only level that has both playable characters as a force wielder that doesn't require any force uses. Using player 2, get Luke into this corner and get Palpatine as far over to the left side as possible. When Vader spawns back in, push Sidious down the core shaft. Chapter 6, Into the Death Star. We end the whole challenge with an amazing zero force uses because it is a vehicle level. Go into the core of the second Death Star and blow it up from the inside. The Empire is now destroyed. The Emperor's defeat ends Return of the Jedi with only 8 force uses. 2 in chapter 1, 5 in chapter 2, 1 in chapter 3, and 0 in chapters 4, 5, and 6. Isn't that just wonderful? That ends the original trilogy with a total of 37 force uses. 15 in A New Hope, 14 in The Empire Strikes Back, 
and a very low count of 8 in Return of the Jedi. That adds up to a total of 110 Force uses across all 6 films. Thanks for watching the challenge. If you have any suggestions, I'm more than glad to do them. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please consider liking and subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. As always, see you later and have a great day.